Hello and welcome everybody, Marcus Small here from the smallman.com. Gonna show you today how you can set up a output like this which spins and changes based on this slicer. Now everything's changing, all the charts are changing, the top uh, or the bottom table is changing, but this top five's not changing. Now what we want to do is we want to connect the two data sources. So this data source has the interesting uh, addition in the slicer of the all. Now if I was to create a pivot table off the back of my department, so I'd get toys, outdoors, clothing, that would be it. So I've added the term all for people that aren't familiar uh, that you have to, well, you don't have to educate them to, to press all the buttons. You just say, right, well, we'll have the consolidation being all. And they click that and then everything changes. But I don't have it set up at the moment. So the pivot table that this is based on, which is just our top five for the current year, top five expenses by labour and our overheads, and that's flowing into here and at the moment it's not changing so we're going to make it so it changes so the data well the slicer that runs things comes off this particular area so it comes out of here so it's the, our list is toys clothing outdoors and all and that's just in that pivot table and then the slice is generated off that so we might regenerate this slicer and then we'll create the procedure that gets this pivot table, the one that's got our top five, to talk to it through this slicer. So the slicer based on this list will talk to this pivot table, which is based off this particular data set. Yeah? So the two data sets are disconnected. The list is not connected to the data, and we're going to get the slicer to get those two, well, to have those two things talk to one another. So that's going to be the underlying premise of this tutorial. So hopefully you enjoy it. When I come back, I'll have cleansed the file and we'll start from scratch. Alrighty, so I've removed the slicer and you can pick up the start file at the link below this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to firstly put the slicer in. Now it's going to be based on this list tab. So go onto the list tab and just select the pivot table. Now we'll choose the analyze menu and we'll insert a slicer. And it's going to be based on our list and we're going to click OK. So analyze, insert slicer, list, OK. And basically we'll clean this up a little bit. I'd like it to go from vertical to horizontal, so I'll right click slicer settings right at the bottom now from here I want to not display the header and I want to take these two out I don't want to show the items with no data last and I don't want to show dollars deleted from the data source so we click that and we get this actually I might want to turn all to the end so I'll right click again and go Z to A good now I'll just turn it from a vertical slicer to a horizontal slicer. So I'll change this from 1 to 4. So the columns become 4. Now you've got to click on the slicer to get that options menu up. And then we just tidy it up. Alright, good stuff. So let's copy this. Let's copy the slicer. Go into the dashboard sheet and paste it there. Now it should produce the same sort of results as it did before, it won't affect this table. We've got to add a little bit of VB. You can change the way this looks and feels um, in the fullness of time. So I'll just fiddle around with the look until I get it just right. You'll notice that I'm creating it so it's got symmetry with the tables below, and I might just change the output to being this one. And it's still working, everything's working quite nicely. Now, uh, the, the, uh, the way that this is, the underlying mechanics behind this, how I'm getting all to sort of, you know, flow through to everything but this table up here is through the calculations page. So in here, in these cells here, uh, I've got a category saying if B2 in the list sheet says all, then display the wildcard character. Otherwise, just have the department that is chosen in the list sheet. So if it doesn't say all in there, if it was to say outdoors, go into the couch sheet, 
It's just the total outdoors, yeah? Alrighty, okay, so that's effectively what I want to do uh, in terms of creating the slicer. Now we've just got to add sort of a, a slight amount of VB code to uh, get these two data sources to talk to one another. So let's go there. So let's press Alt F11 and there's a module, it's a blank module called module change. And what we want to do is create some code in there. If you don't have it, it's just insert module and you'll have a module called module one. But uh, if you're using my template, you will. All right, so we'll give it a name. So we'll say sub and then I'm just going to say that this is my change piv procedure. And you can call it whatever you like. That just seems to be relevant for what we're trying to do. Yeah. Now I need three variables. I need one for the pivot table, one for the pivot field, and I need a string variable. So we will dim short for dimension PT as a pivot table. Pivot table. I like it when it comes up. You just press the space bar and that finishes the procedure. And then I'm going to do the same for the pivot field. And then I'm going to dim that as a pivot field, F tab, cool. And I'm going to dim STR as a string. All right, there, that's the setup. Basically, they're my variables. Now I'll just set those variables to be equal to, and I'll show, I'll talk to you, I'll talk you through what each of the elements need to uh, point to. So we're going to set our pivot table first. So if it's an Excel object, you need to have set before. So you go set PT, short for pivot table, and that is going to equal, what we have to do is we've got to go in and get the name of the pivot table in the sheet that the pivot table is actually in. Yeah, so what I want to do is go into the piv sheet and then highlight this pivot table and then on the analyze menu, you'll see the name of the pivot table. Now you could give it a name to be a bit more relevant than, than pivot table three but I'm just going to go with what is actually in there, yeah? So it's pivot table three. So Alt F11 brings VBA back. Now, notice here it says sheet two piv in brackets. Now the sheet two is the worksheet code name, and I'm going to use that because in case anyone changes the sheet name from piv to pivot table or whatever they care to name it, the code won't break, yeah? So it's best practice to use what's known as the worksheet code name. You can change the worksheet code name, but it's highly unlikely that would happen, seeing as very few Excel users actually understand VBA, so they'd have to know where to go and what to do in order to change it. So it tends not to get changed. So sheet two dot, and then it's pivot tables with an S, It usually pops up, there it is, pivot tables, and then we open a bracket, and then it's just the name of the pivot table. So it was uh, pivot table three. And then quotation mark, and then close our bracket. So that actually lines it up. So it, in now instead of writing all that out, I can just type PT. And we'll do the same for the pivot field. So we will set the pivot field equal to the pivot field in our pivot table. So here's the advantage of the variable above. So we'll just go pivot table dot pivot fields. There it is there. And then that is equal to the name of the pivot field in our pivot table. So in this case, it's going to be department, yeah? So it's D-E-P-T. There we go, and we close our bracket, yeah? And then finally, I just need the name of the string, which is just the name of the department, which appears in the other list. So it appears in this list sheet. So in the list sheet, it's in cell B2, yeah? So we go into, well, we'll just, we don't need to set the variable of the string, so we just say the string is equal to, now we get the worksheet code name, which is sheet four up here. So it's sheet four dot, and then we just need the rate, the value inside the cell. So I'll just say B2 and then dot value. All right, good stuff. So that's 
the setup from our variables at the top. And then finally, we just need to do a couple of fields, a couple of things. So we'll say that we want the pivot field and then we want to clear the filters. So we'll clear the filters, so clear all filters. And then finally, we want to set the pivot field equal to the str, our string. So we'll say pivot field, and then we'll say current page, and then that is equal to our str. And that is effectively the code that we're going to use to change the pivot table data in that particular cell to being what's equal to what's in this cell. Yeah, so we can actually run a test. At the moment, the list sheet says outdoors. This says all. So if we just go into this code so we can see what's actually happening just here, and we can use the F8 key to run through the procedure, and we'll see if cell B2 in the PIV sheet changes to outdoors. So we'll press F8, 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 and that just goes line by line through the code so we can see what's actually happening. And then this is where the rubber hits the road. So we'll press F8 and it changes to outdoors. Now that has a knock-on effect in the dashboard sheet. So finance, corporate, IT, admin, and R&D appear in the admin sheet, the 841, the 818. 841, 818, so that changes it. Now, slight problem, we need a trigger for this macro. Macros need triggers, so you either have like a button, an on change event, something like that to actually make this uh, particular piece of code fire off. And when it fires off, then the pivot table changes and has a knock on effect into the dashboard sheet. So our trigger in this case is going to be the pressing of these buttons. And the pressing of those buttons, what they do is that will change the filter on the pivot table in the list sheet. So it changes the filter here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it to the worksheet code inside of VBA. So we'll basically go to the worksheet that the pivot table is on, and the pivot table is on the list sheet. So that's what's going to change, yeah? By clicking these buttons here, the list sheet will change the list sheet pivot table, so it will change. So we'll double click this cell, and then, so we'll click into here, so we're into the sheet for list sheet, so this is the worksheet code for the list sheet. And then we're just gonna choose from this drop down the worksheet, it creates some superfluous code, we don't really need it, but it opens this menu, and what we want is the pivot table change sync, yeah? Now, don't delete the wrong one, the pivot table change sync's at the top, the bottom one you don't need, it's just noise. Get out, and then in here, what we want is the name of our, <laughs> name of our code, which I can't remember, so I'll just double click here, change pip. So I'll copy it so I don't make a typo. It's always good practice. Copy and then just paste it in there. And that will run the macro to change the list tab. Actually, it changes the piv. Well, it changes both. List tab slash piv table. So basically, uh, make sure you put a little uh, apostrophe before that. You can't just type code without it, and that turns it all green. All right, good stuff. So basically now, whenever that slicer is clicked on, the code will run. It should happen reasonably instantly. So we can test that. So we should see the numbers change when I ch choose clothing. Cool. Outdoors, toys, and the big daddy, everything, boom. That is how we get the addition of a consolidation onto an output page with a little bit of code and a little bit of thinking through a problem like that. So, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, you can pick up the start and end file on my website. Oh, I've got it all on the same page, link below. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, everybody.